Rugby League is back. Drum roll, please. You're a true Warriors fan. I have no recollection of that one, no. We don't all have to agree. It's good to be back. It's just a really boring thing. Oh, partner. Start winning some games. <laughs> I think there'll be a lot of changes to the team. I've got them uh, making the eight for mine. Let's go. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Advantage Line TRB's Rugby League Betting Podcast. My name is Carl Tiley. That is Paul Mawari. Paul, huge week in Rugby League yet again. Certainly was. Uh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah, I, I know we'll go through the results later on in the show, uh, but uh, talk about uh, a few upsets. Uh, yeah, It's very, very hard to you know, keep, a, 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 I guess, a hold of a number of these teams um, it's it's ridiculous how they can put in a subpar performance one week and then look like grand finalists the next week. Um, so yeah, it, it, but that's the great thing about the you know about rugby league is the unpredictability about it. As I uh, introduce our our second guest of the day, Nick Tedeschi. Teddy, I had a look this morning. Thirteen of thirty-two games so far, the underdog has won. Um with four this last weekend. It's an impossible competition to pick. Uh, not that impossible. A little disappointed we didn't get the clip of uh, me declaring the Dragons at the Plus uh, home this week, as per, as per the week before. Uh, I see we're running a real biased kind of vibe here. But uh, uh, not that hard to pick. I think I, uh, I think I barely, t- barely, barely back to lose the last week against the line last week. So it was a, a, a fill-up, Carl. So... Uh, underdogs early in the year, that's all you want to know. Like, seriously, like, uh, take away the jokes. You want to be backing underdogs straight out, and you want to be backing underdogs at the plus for the most part, because they win year after year after year. And that's enough of Nick Tedeschi today, guys. Um, <laughs> our, next, <laughs> our next guest, good mate from, uh, I can only presume, the underbellies of Mount Smart Stadium. Surely, how's it going, mate? Yeah, good. Obviously, uh, a valuable two points picked up against the Knights. So uh, all is fine in Warriors world. We welcome back the second best, arguably fullback in the comp behind Roger Tuivasa Sheik. So yeah, we're going from strength to strength. Well, that, um, you've set me up for one of the great segues there, Surly. We're going straight into the divided opinion, and I'll throw to you first, Surly. Roger Tuivasa Sheik is not the best option at fullback for the Warriors going forward. I agree. He is not the best option for the Warriors going forward. I think Chance showed last year that he's an extremely quality footballer. I think we've lacked some polish out the back of our attacking sets, um, resulting in Dallin only scoring two tries from four games last year. That would have been criminal. I think Chance gives us that ball-playing ability. I think Rogers already shown he's a great centre. He's an excellent fullback, but I think it's best for the team to have both of them out on the paddock. So... Yeah, I think people forget Chance was probably very close to winning Golden Boot last year. He's an incredible player. So having them both in the starting 13 is the best option for us moving forward. Teddy, you've been waxing lyrical about Chance and when he's on and not on the field uh, for the Warriors. So I can only presume that you're uh, you're in the camp with Surly. Yeah, I am. Uh, Rogers is the better fullback, for one. But uh, to get both people on the field, best for the Warriors is to play Chance at fullback. I know for very different games. I think Roger fits way better into the centres than Chance does uh, in the centres. Uh, Roger was outstanding and can eat up the metres like a few others. But in terms of that touch ball playing at the back, I think Chance absolutely unlocks the wingers far better than than, than Roger does. Even at Roger at his, Roger at his pump wasn't that uh, uh, kind of deaf ball, ball playing type stuff. Um, I'm going to stick with uh, Chance at and you, Paul? Uh, we're three from three. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, no, D, Chance definitely starts in the number one. Roger goes back into the centres. Wow. Best thing for the Waz. Uh, I think Chance, um, I really like him um, in that defensive line. Uh, I expect the Warriors' defence to really tighten up over the next couple of weeks with Chance back, um, sort of directing that uh, team around the field. Um, but it's... It's a no-brainer for mine, and, and I know uh, Artie has had a massive game uh, against the Knights, uh, certainly with the ball in hand. Um, he, he was just just immense, um, and it's great to have someone like Roger uh, as a backup if uh, we have injuries 
later on in the season. But right now, the best go for the Waz is uh, Nickel Clot stat number one, Roger in the centres. Very nice. I thought, well, I don't know if we ask a few more people, the, the opinions may differ, but we'll go four from four to start the uh, the very undivided opinion segment on the Advantage Line this week. Um, straight into a recap of the round. Roosters 16, Panthers 22. Surly, the Panthers' right edge is pretty dangerous. Yeah, the Panthers in general are pretty dangerous. I think that's Luai's ninth straight win now without Nathan Cleary. So they are more than just a Cleary-based side. I think they've shown that their structures are so strong, the way their back five kickstart their sets, their ability to just drop players under, work the opposition defensive line to the point where they're just so tired that almost anyone could do that job. I think we all agree Cleary is one of, if not the best footballers in the world, but the system stands up with no matter who is wearing the seven jersey. So they're a quality side. Um, they're looking every bit odds on to win the four, Pete, because they look pretty unreal at the moment. They welcome back guys like Fisher Harris. Yeah, they're, they're deadly. Mm, watch out, everybody else. Uh, Teddy... Dogs put up a good fight, but went down 20-16 to 16 over the Bunnies. Yeah, should have won the hand the Dogs. Uh, it was there for the taking uh, two, two, two figures across the ball. It was that game. Uh, first referee, uh, Jared Sutton. The non meaning of Isaiah Tusk before half-time was utterly ridiculous and certainly managed uh, the Bunnies back in the game. But the big criminal on that one was Cameron Surrella. If Stephen Crichton plays fullback, gets more of the ball. The ball looked good in that game. Crichton was outstanding every time he touched the ball, which was about four or five times. He was South were there for the pack, they're playing slow, they're injured, they're not playing great, and the ball just couldn't get done. Backdoor cover there for the dogs, but uh, couldn't quite get the two points. Paul Broncos thirty eight, Cowboys twelve at at eighteen twelve or even twenty twelve at half time, the Cowboys would have thought we're in this. Yeah, they probably did. Um I think what we learned from that game is the most important player for the Broncos is the guy wearing the seven jersey, Adam Reynolds. Um, he, uh, once again, just put on a masterclass and in that second half just thought, j just had the ball on his track. His kicking game is mm -hmm. just so, so good. Um, and it releases a lot of pressure off that forward, uh, off that forward pack. Uh, he was, he was a, a I, I you know, I, I used to think Reese Walsh was the most important, or someone like a Payne Haas to go for, but it's Adam Reynolds that everything revolves around here. Um, and he showed against the Cowboys there. The Cowboys, that's one that they should have actually picked up. And maybe we're just seeing a wee bit of a regression uh, to the uh, norm here, but he is the most important player for the Broncos, Adam Reynolds. Teddy, you talk about how slow and, and tough the Rabbitohs are playing. I bet they... Uh ruining the decision of not renewing Adam Reynolds' contract a few years ago. Yeah, look, you, you can talk about the Adam Reynolds decision. They, they made they made some calls. I, I, well, I know for the fact they don't regret not not signing Adam Reynolds. I think they thought he was, was 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 busted. I think what they possibly regret is the faith they've shown in Lachlan Elias and pulling the wrong way in there. Um, I, I think even the most optimistic Adam Reynolds fan three years ago didn't think he'd still be playing at the same level as he is now. So... Um, yeah, obviously, in hindsight, you'd, you'd, you'd rather have Reynolds, but don't they regret the decision? But plenty of South fans certainly do. Dragons 20, Manly 12. Paul, I'll stick with you. Our man, uh, Jack Bird, scored the laziest try <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, um, how good win stadium, Wollongong. Um, and, and the Dragon, a game where you would have expected Manly to sort of pick up the points fairly easily there, and they didn't. Um, Zach Lomax is playing some of the best footy of his life on the wing, and obviously the big news uh, is come, gone. coming out that he'll be gone at the end of the season. Um, but I guess that clears a whole heap of cap space for the um, Dragons, but but boy, oh boy, uh, he's playing so well. In, in fact, he's been mentioned uh, in sort of state of origin circles now. Um, just Which is a dark contrast to what, to what Shane Flanagan's told him, uh, that when he went through every centre in the club and said, you're about the 22nd best centre. 22nd, yes. yes. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> coaching. <laughs> but, 
But there's a, there's a, a bit of rhyme to the reason uh, there behind Flanagan. And he's right. And if he said to him, look, you're in the top three wingers in, in the comp, I don't think you'd be too far off the mark. He's just playing so well. He's the goal kicker as well. Um, it, it, it was a huge, huge turnaround from their performance last week. So I, I think this is what we're going to see from the Dragons for most of the season. They'll be up uh, one week against a, a team that you don't expect them to be, and then they'll fall away the, the week after. So, um, yeah, well done to the boys. Um, they Look, they look good against Manly. They're, Manly look very, very anemic on attack, um, and they shouldn't be that way when they've got the likes of Tommy Turbo, mm -hmm. Daly Cherry Evans uh, running around. So uh, an improved defensive effort from the Dragons, um, and they did enough to win. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be taking them plus the points um, a number of times this season because I, I think they'll be underrated um, more games than not by the bookies. So uh, just, just, just confirming, Carl, that that's uh, their second win, which is one more than Black put them in for at the start of the year. I actually think it was Surly. <laughs> surly? Huh? No, I thought it was no? Blake. Oh, yeah. Blake. Okay. Sorry, Surly. Stray, bu stray bullets. Your way. Jeez. Involved in a drive-by. I had nothing to do with there. <laughs> Rough. Yeah. Eyewitness. Um, surly, my uh, my Titans went down to the Dolphins 30-14. Um, at 10-0, I thought, here we go. That, that close to top eight call, I'm back. No good. Yeah, geez, that was big of you calling me out the, the call before and then you've got the Titans close to top eight. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd jump on them now to win a game. I think that would be a safer bet. Uh, yeah, they're, they're all over the shop. I saw Des spraying them after, but I'm not even sure one of his famous uh, rev-ups can get them going. I thought Fafita was probably the one highlight for them in his return and not sure if he's ready to start minutes-wise, but they're going to have to chuck him straight back in because... They look all at sea at the moment, whereas Dolphins, top of the table. Wayne Bennett, special. Unreal. I'll stick with you, Surly. Was 20, Knights 12. We mentioned RTS was uh, incredible at the back, but for me, Wade Egan back in the nine makes all the difference. Yeah, I called him the CEO of Ruck, Man Ruck Manipulation a few weeks ago, and that's uh, exactly what he does. Just his ability to get out from the ruck, pass across the face of the ruck while still standing so square. He just tears teams apart week in and week out. Um, again, he gave us that injury scare that he does every week, and the whole hopes of the season flash before your eyes because we're by far a better football team when he is in the hooking role. But, um, yeah, well done to the boys. I think we've already seen this year that we're going to get every team's best. We're no longer the Hunters. We're the Hunted, and teams are going to show up ready to play against the Warriors. Uh, but we've been gritty. We've hung tough. We've backed our defense over the last couple of weeks, and now hopefully with Chance back, we'll see that attacking polish that we've been missing to start the year over the last two weeks in particular teddy i know you're a big fan of uh new zealand turning into a rugby league nation and uh it must have been quite cool seeing the crowd standing up singing the team song uh, after the game it, it was uh unreal uh it's great i've you know long long advocated for new zealand to uh teach rugby union as a sport to legalize it and uh uh and everyone get on board rugby league but it seems seems the country's just doing it a bit more organically than i'd hoped uh, but great to see. Only only complaint is any chance of any chance of cover. Eight and a half point favourites, and they uh, they just <laughs> they just missed the cover. Like it's two weeks in a row that they've, they've missed the cover by a half point on the final line. So come on, last. We'll get to bad beats shortly. Um, Paul Sharks thirty six, Raiders twenty two. What a crazy game! Raiders up eighteen nil. What a crazy! The thirty six points they let in. I was watching the the clock, and this is a. A combined total of minutes the tries were scored in, not, you know, 26 minutes. They led in 36 points. Unbelievable. That's a sign of a bad team, isn't it? That, yeah. That, that, that's, that, good teams don't let that sort of thing happen. And this is another one where uh, I think Teddy uh, was had a very low opinion of the Raiders before the season started, and they've got off they got off to a good start, but I think they're starting to come back to where they probably should be. Um, but when you get off to a start like that, how do you then just absolutely just capitulate? It, it, it was ridiculous. Um, the, Sharks were missing, the Sharks were missing four four forwards. 
fought, fought Toby Rudolph, Dale Finna came, uh, Britton Nakora, and there's one other, Royce Hunt. They are playing Talakai out of position in the back row, have played a debutant at the centre, and come back from 18 0 down. That was a horrific loss for the Raiders. Horrific loss. Yeah. But I agree. Um, well done to the Sharks um, for not just giving up, but just in, then getting up over the top and then making it look like you know, if you just looked at the score, oh, yeah. you'd think, oh, well, the Sharks did what they were meant to do. They probably got out to an early lead and, and just kept the pressure on and maybe the Raiders scored a couple of late tries. No, it was, it, was a t- it was a bizarre game. I feel like there's only two teams in the comp that that kind of game could come from, and it's those two teams. Raiders shooting out to an early lead like that and blowing it and then getting absolutely hammered. Last game, Eels 16, Tigers 17. Tigers up into sixth position. Teddy, uh, young Galvin is some sort of player. Yeah, outstanding. Uh, has he got a career uh, like the next uh, Andrew Jones, or has he got a career like the next Luke Brooks? We'll soon see. But I uh, uh, lo- love what he's doing. I love how involved he's in going. It's his fourth first grade game, and he is taking control. Like he is really everywhere. He's got, he's backing up. He's not afraid of the physicality. Like I love what he's doing. So, uh, he was outstanding. I think the key to that game though was Benji's coaching. He has done after that first week when they got absolutely smacked around by the Raiders. He made some adjustments, and the one thing I've not seen from the Tigers, possibly in their history, was their gritty goal line defence that they put in, particularly the, in the the last three quarters of that first half where they were camped on their line time and time again and kept turning the eels away. And I thought it was a tremendous effort. And then a couple of players, Afi Coruscant, he is surely a top 10 player in the competition this day. It's like he, he has been forced to do everything at the Tigers, including goal kicking, dropouts, doesn't, does not miss, does not miss a beat. Uh, and, and young dream baller, I thought was, was outstanding at the back again. So, uh, Tigers, I, I, I don't think we're going to be seeing them win the top eight this year, but they should be very, very happy with the trajectory they're on. I think I, I'm, I'm loads the back of coach so young as Benji you play with, you know, a lot of players, but I, I, I'm happy to, I'd be happy to put Benji doing the right things. I like what he's, I like where he's headed. So I think Benji could be a, could be a good coach for him. Huge. We'll clip that piece up just in case things go wrong <laughs> later. <laughs> Nathan Cleary should be a first grader. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still looking for the clip. All right. Bad beats of the round. You've already said it, Ted, but the, the, the worst beat for me, and it happened twice in the same game, uh, shout out to Warriors 13-plus punters and minus 8.5 punters. You got done... In the last six minutes of the game, when Bradman Best scored a try, he should not have scored. Uh, that's tough, tough to cop. Never mind the kick from the sideline. And the kick from the sideline. <laughs> not, not good for Warriors fans. But talking of kicks from the sideline, uh, Nico Hines, um, that last try, uh, the kick, the conversion from the sideline that took it from 12 and under to 13 and over. Um, you probably you're on a bit of a a bad beat there if you're on the sharks twelve and under because you would have thought you you were gone uh, after what was it twenty or so minutes and then you thought well here I'm back I'm in um, so yeah yeah that those last minute conversions or missed penalties if you were on Parramatta to win uh, on Sunday uh, no Monday um, is that the worst kick you've ever seen Surly? As a goal kicker, and didn't, didn't, didn't <laughs> well, after the penalty was awarded, didn't he go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Guffo, I've got this. Yeah, I've got this. Got this. You got to rate the confidence. <laughs> I think uh, it was that gave him a bit of a serve after yeah, he missed the kick. Well, my worst beat for the weekend was complete grubbery. Uh, managed to find a few stray bookies who'd uh, left plus five and a half up on the roosters when they were. Uh, and the Panthers were uh, clearly being ruled out and were now four and a half point favourites and got exactly what that kind of grubbery deserves. Lose by six after failing to take the conversion at the end. <laughs> didn't even take the kick, didn't even give us a chance. So it was the right, was the right play for the Roosters, but absolutely sick for, uh, for uh, us grubs. What about you, Sally? For someone who sprays the board, loves a punt, any bad beats? 
Yeah, I had an absolute shocker. You mentioned before that Warriors 13 plus. Um, I'm obviously a big advocate of that, and my DMs on Instagram will tell me that people are sick of hearing me say it because we haven't been 13 plusing anyone. But I had Jackson Ford Montoya Warriors 13 plus as the same game claim. <laughs> Luckily, I got a bonus back, so it's not all. But yeah, that was paying 26 of the best, and I would have really enjoyed that. <laughs> on my um on my Easter Sunday, that would have been a great way to celebrate uh, a, a long weekend, but wasn't to be. At least we won, though. That is tough to cop. Oh, quick shout out to uh, to Jackson Ford. I gave him a spray last week for not passing it and getting Luke Metcalf the first try within twenty minutes. We uh, doubled down this week and got on the option for Jackson Ford to score in the first twenty minutes, paying oh, seventeen dollars, and he saluted for us. Little payback there. So appreciate that, Jackson. <laughs> All right, fellas. I just realized, Silly, I don't know if I told you which day we're doing the grid for. It was for yesterday. Oh, wow. I did it for this morning. Well, yeah. you're going to have to pause the pod. You've got five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely hard. You, happy for you to sit this one out if you like, mate. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit this one out. I will say 34.2 today. Not amazing, but not that bad. I'll take it. I'll tell you what, if you got 34.2 for yesterday's one, you probably win by a landslide. But across the top, 75-plus career tries, uh, has played for the Storm, is, has been a, Colin, a teammate of Colin Best. Down the left, played for the Sharks, five or more finals tries, and has played for Canberra Raiders. This has got to be one of the most brutal ones of all time, doesn't it? It's very, very tough. Very tough. Uh, Teddy, we'll start with you across the top, please. Your three players. Top was Daniel Lyle to be proud of. Uh, Shark 75 plus tries, David Peachy, 3.5 on points. My only wizard coming up, Sharks and Storm player, uh, Russell Aitken, hooker in the 2008 grand final, points 3.8, wizard. Uh, Colin Best teammate, Shark, Dean Treister, 0 0.77. Wow, I'll tell you what, he's off to a flying start. <laughs> it gets worse. Well, I hope so. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, 75 plus career tries played the Sharks. Brick Kamali. Uh, Sharks Storm. Brian Norrie. Sorry, oh, nice. Kamali was 5.36. Brian Norrie, 5.10. Uh, Colin Best teammate played for the Sharks. Tyson Frizzell, 3.17. Got lucky there. He only played 12 games for the Sharks. <sighs> Very lucky. Right. Uh, played this is going to be bad. I can tell by Paulie's <laughs> his levels. Played for the Sharks, 75 or more career tries. Uh, Preston Campbell, uh, 5.03. Uh, played for the Sharks, played for the Storm. I thought, well, I could go with the obvious, Brett Gamorley. And I thought, no, I'll try and sort of get a a nice one here. And I went with Taweta Nico. Um, oh. Pre, he, he was a hundred pre ninety eight. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did play for both teams. Um, unfortunately, uh, not uh, from nineteen ninety eight uh, onwards. And then uh, played for the Sharks and a uh, teammate of Colin Best, the big centre Paul Mellor, one point zero four. Middle row, please, Ted. Five or more finals tries, seventy five plus tries. Jonathan Thurston. 2.63 points. Uh, Storm player, five or more finals tries. Steve Turner, 3.53. And Colin Best teammate, five or more finals tries. Matt Cooper, 17.61. Oh, oh. Okay. Ouch. Ouch. Mm -hmm. That's almost the 100 that I got. <laughs> and that's not. Um, 75 plus three tries, five or more finals tries. The Beast, Manu Vetuve, 1.73. Uh, played for the Storm, five or more finals tries. Israel Falau, 1.88. That's a unicorn. Uh, Colin Best teammate with five or more finals tries. Put Sam Burgess, 100. Oh, no good. Oh, I'm going to say no matter what points uh, you'd get for Israel Falau, Teddy will never, ever pick him in NRL grid. No, regardless, he would rather take the 100. There could be a category that says first name Israel against the other category, last name Falau. 
Uh, five or more tries, uh, final tries, 75 career tries. Anytime there's 70 uh, career tries involved, I'm taking Manu Vatuve, uh, 1.73. Um, five or more finals tries and played for the Storm, Matt Geyer, 5.30. And then five or more finals tries and a teammate of Colin Best, Reese Wesser, 100. Oh. Panthers didn't play many finals, Paul. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, he was there when they weren't quite doing the business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, bottom row, please, Teddy. Bring us home. Raiders 75 plus career tries. Phil Graham, 4.26. Uh, Storm and Raiders, uh, struggle here. Ryan Hinchcliffe, 9.65. And Colin Best teammate, Raiders, uh, and I'll favor mine, Trevor Thurling, 2.22. Trevor Thurling. Well, they're great in our players. Um, He's related to Surly if you've got a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Here's Paulie. I'll claim it. Uh, 75 plus career tries has played for the Raiders. Jack Whiten, 12.12. Uh, he scored 75 tries. Bang on. I got lucky there. <laughs> um. Storm and Raiders, I mean, Brett White, 9.37. Colin B's teammate played for the Raiders, Joel Thompson, 8.03. I, I know they're looking at updating the NRL grid to include 2024 stats, so he's got a few more than 75 70, now. 77. Except, uh, 77. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, was it played for the Raiders and 75 or more career tries? I went with Colin Best. Uh, seven point five seven. <laughs> uh, played for the Raiders. Played for the Storm. Brett White, nine point three seven. Uh, played for the Raiders and was a teammate of Colin Best. Nigel Plum. Well, I think Teddy has used before. Uh, Four point zero one. All right, give me a total, Ted. Forty-four point six. I think you win. Two hundred and thirty-four. <laughs> And I was 146.8. And I didn't r rush this one either. I had plenty of time. <laughs> well, maths go for an hour, does it? Not half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Silly, I, was, what? I was doing it during uh, maths. One of the great grids to miss, I think, Sally. Yes. Yeah, that sounds like a shambles. Yep. All right, let's get on to this week. Uh, this week's games. And we start the round with the Storm... Be the Broncos Storm are paying a dollar forty-three for the Broncos two dollars seventy-five. Storm have won fourteen of the last fifteen matchups. Of course, they went down twenty-six nil uh, in the finals last year. Average total points in the last ten between these two forty-seven point four. The average winning margin in the last ten twenty-five. Huge, Teddy. Uh, any more stats to add to those? Yeah, it was since the 2006 grand final when the Broncos upset the Storm, 31 and 5. The Storm of uh, uh, a one of the 36 games. So, uh, since 2008, 25 of 33 covers for the Storm. They are absolutely, this is one of the biggest dominations of all time. Uh, I know we're in a time crunch here, so I'm just going to add a couple more things. Cameron Munster, uh, Jerome Hughes, both back, absolutely huge. Center line moved from four and a half to seven and a half. Uh, but the angle I'm playing this week, I'm playing pretty hard. Interstate teams off a win, round one to eight in the last four years, cover it just 37%, 42% since 2008. So teams like the Broncos off a big win at home, they've got to travel, tend to be overrated by the market. I'm um, chips in the storm here, uh, back in the minus. Uh, yeah, six and a half, seven and a half there, but uh, I think the storm will do this and I'll do this easily. Six and a half with us at the moment. Good one. Silly on the six and a half? Yep. And I'll be back in the Storm. I think they've won their last 11 straight games at home. So Storm at home, you just back them in and then you chuck in Munster, fresh off slipping over in the shower. He's back. Chuck him in. Straight in. Munster, Hughes, big ins. This looks fairly straightforward for mine. And I see um, after the teams were named, uh, that line moved. I think the Storm were around fifty-five prior to uh, Teamless Tuesday, and now they're into $1.43. Broncos have drifted out to two seventy-five. Yeah, I like the Storm as well. Uh, just so many um, positive trends for them at home. 
and against the Broncos, as Teddy just mentioned. So, yep, love the storm. Just quick, if you want a uh, first try scorer as well, Will Rulbrook, he's been the first try scorer in uh, three of Melbourne's last four when they go in as the favourite. So, Niche, I like that. Uh, I was listening back to last week's episode, fellas, and, man, we put the, the curse on a few teams. We were very bullish on a few of them, and <laughs> didn't end up well. Uh, so hopefully not the case here. Next game, Bulldogs v Roosters. Bulldogs three dollar fifty five. Outsiders Roosters dollar twenty eight. Teddy, can you see the Roosters bouncing back here? Uh, I think they'll probably win the game, but the ten and a half is way too big. It's way too big in this one. Uh, home underdogs opening eight rounds the year, getting a, at least eight point start, cover at sixty three percent. Bulldogs haven't been that bad. The Bulldogs are one and three, but they've covered the last two. They put in against South. They've, they've put they've put in defensively all year, to be honest. And a real angle against the Roosters here. Road favourites available more for loss, covered as thirty three percent since two thousand and eight. That's across the entire season. That is an insanely bad number. This is, a, yeah, the, the Bulldogs plus ten half for a max bet this week. So uh, I'll be jumping in all over them. They've covered four of their last six, getting double digits. The Roosters covered just seven of their last twenty when favourites. So uh jumping all over the dogs this way and as an aside weather is going to be monsoon in sydney on friday so i would be uh jumping on that plus 10 and a half as early as possible because the weather that is the lower that number is going to get surely you, you're nodding your head in agreement there well the, the monsoon got me um <laughs> <laughs> i was <laughs> I was backing the chalks, obviously, because no Addo Carr, no Jacob Preston, and you got to say how tough is he to play through that broken draw because I heard Brandon Smith talking about it. Like His was just a small break, whereas Preston, that was pretty bad, and, and he played through. Cool to see Josh Curran get the start there. Big fan of his, obviously. But, yeah, I think the chalks will be too good, but that line is pretty big, especially given that it's going to be tough conditions. Paul, next game, Knights. Dollar forty one dragons two dollars eighty. You said earlier you'll be backing the dragons every chance you get at the plus. Does that stand true here? Yes, it does. I'm happy to take the dragons plus here. Six and a half. Yep, plus six and a half. Um, I saw enough last week to um, suggest that they that Flanagan can get them switched on, um, and so I think they'll take a lot out of that game. That was a big, big win against the Manly Sea Eagles. I like the way that Ben Hunt's been guiding this team around the park. Uh, as I said, Zach Lomax has been one of the best wingers in the comp. He's playing such good footy at the moment, um, especially uh, bringing the ball out of their own sort of red zone. Uh, they've looked a, a lot better there. Um, so I can see them keeping this um, pretty close. And once again, for mine, the Knights, they're a one-person team. If you can shut down Ponga, you can pretty much shut down the Knights. So... Um, I'm sure that Flanagan will have a game plan that uh, revolves around uh, keeping Kalen Ponga under wraps. I think if they can do that, they can come out, not just cover, well, I think they're a chance of winning this game. Certainly another halves change. Uh, Jackson Hastings is back. Is this uh, a masterstroke or is this coach running scared? Uh, possibly a bit of both. I actually thought that uh Cogger and Hastings was the better combination for them so I'm excited to see it happen um Jackson fresh off being accused of falling asleep on the hill at the Warriors game by Vossi who uh quickly apologized so he'll have a point to prove as well but the Knights do get a few bodies back Gagai I think Braley gets the start Leo Thompson back they're always hard at home but plus six and a half for the Dragons I'll be jumping on that as well next one Waz v Bunnies in Sydney. Bunnies dollar ninety seven. Warriors dollar seventy nine. Warriors one and a half point favourites. Teddy, plenty of changes for the Warriors. Chances back. Tomato Martin into the halves. Marata Niakore gets a start. What do you like here? I found this a very difficult game because every what looking at the eye, you just want to be all over the Warriors in this one. But the numbers kind of really dictate. Souths for a bet here. Souths have won the last eight between them, four out of the last 15, covered seven out of 23. Home dogs off a win, cover 62%, last four years, rounds one to eight. Warriors covered just 12 of 31 of the favourite, one of their last six day games, six of their last 15 in Australia. So probably a small lean towards Souths, but having seen the way Souths are playing, 
og om, om nok komplementer over best bet, hvis man er OB de andre. Uh, andre siger 62.7 procent af home dog for women. The opening at Rams last four years. Seattle has some big under angles. 22 and 15 the under, off conceding 16 of pure. And day games, Warriors, 26, 13 under. So uh, 27, 18 under, off scoring 20 of pure the Warriors. So uh, under is probably my best bet as well. I'll counter your under with uh, the average total points in the last 10 between these two, 52.7. I know. That amount does scare me a little bit as well because they're too, too fast for it. But been, especially South have been a very different side. You know, a lot of they've, got, they've got no points themselves. If, if, if the game's near to 52, the Warriors have won this by 30. That's, that's a great place to bring Surly in. Uh, Surly, a few changes. What do you think of the halves in particular to Mario Martin getting a start over Chanel Harris to meet him. Yeah, I think Webby Sean, even last year, I think Tomato was the only player that he recruited to that squad. So he's a big fan. I think having Chanel on the bench makes sense as well because we might see what happened last week with Freddie dropping out. Chanel can cover the nine, he can cover halves, he can play lock as well at a stretch. So I think it's more just a straight swap. You chuck Tomato in. And um, yeah, he's a handy footballer. We're so lucky that we've got three great, great halves there. And this is where that depth can hopefully shine through. Um, I like uh, Teddy's call of Warriors by 30. That's all I heard from his stats. So um, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that and, and roll with that. Absolutely. Anything to add on the Warriors game, Paul? Metcalf, he's a big, big loss. Um, if you watch the games, he's been a major part of a number of their try scoring especially the tries that he scores as well, he just straightens up. He's another player like Wade Egan who straightens up that attack um, and he takes the ball to the line. Tamari Martin's not that sort of player, uh, or he's not anymore. Um, so I'm guessing that Webby's going to go in with a slightly different game plan than they have been so far this season. Uh, I've been waiting for Cody Walker to jump up out of the ground and show us the sort of form that we've seen from him. Uh, historically, that hasn't happened. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't happen this week. Uh, and if it's a monsoon, uh, maybe it's just a, a a big slog forward forward battle up front uh, with the team that has the best kicking game maybe coming through. And uh, I, I think I like Sean Johnson's kicking game uh, in conditions like that if they do get um, a, a bit of rain. So yeah, uh, I'm leaning slightly towards the Wars, but not with a lot of, like a whole heap of confidence. It's not what we want to hear. Um, the way I've been tipping, maybe it is the way you want to yeah, hear. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the next game? Manly Seagulls, $2.28. Okay. Panthers, $1.60. Panthers are three and a half point favourites. Teddy? Uh, yeah, all over Panthers here. Um, especially with the line not coming out. I'll, I'll probably rate Manly lower than most judges, they're, they're, they're a lot of talk that they were into the top eight this year, top four, all that rubbish. They're, they're mainly live and die on Turbo, to be honest. So that's where that's where they're at. Uh, and when, and Turbo is not foolproof anymore. We, five errors last week had a shocker against the Dragons. So, right, uh, don't say this is a great bounce back spot. They've only covered eight of 21 against top four position, the, the, the Seagulls. Penrith won eight straight against uh, uh, Manly, 14 and 16. They won their last four at Brookie, the last three by more than 12. But Key here covered uh, eight of their last 12 with uh, no Cleary. Uh, and they are 25 and 14 against the spread when not a double digit favourite. So I don't know where that's at. They just cover when they're not huge favourites. So their last week against the Chooks, like them this week against uh, Mina. Surly, you're a big Panthers man. Yeah, I'll be on the Panthers. Congrats to our DCE. Obviously becomes the most cat manly player ever and no doubt there'll be a big crowd out there to uh, celebrate that milestone. So Manly could be fired up, but I think you're pretty crazy if you are going against Penrith, a team that's so consistent against a team like Manly who have shown already that they can be very <laughs> inconsistent. So yeah, I'll be back in the Panthers. And the key to this one is it's going to be Sunia Taru for another tongue against Jackson Paulo. So good luck with that one, Manly. Yeah, rough. <laughs> silly, silly. Can we get a little uh, Panthers? Uh... Oh yeah, here we go. Uh... It didn't come through. Oh, I didn't hear it. That didn't come through. Surely, yeah. your mouth move. <laughs> 
Definitely <laughs> nothing there. Is there something I need to do? Mate, do what is going on? <laughs> that was doing my best. One more. <laughs> <laughs> that, one came, that one sort of came through. <laughs> oh, God. Those, those were three doozies. You're lucky. Jesus. Here, here we go. Wow. Oh, that was shocking, Paula. <laughs> uh, speaking oh, of... Um, the... <laughs> that's what usually happens. Speaking of milestones... It... <laughs> He's still trying. Ah, we out. Roger Tuivasa, is it... Is that his 200th game? 200th game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that, now that just makes me lean a little bit more towards the Waz as well because if there's one player that they'll um, all get around and, and hopefully uh, celebrate a milestone, it'll be uh, Roger Tuivasa. So, yeah. We don't celebrate any yeah. players. Fantastic uh, for DCE. Uh, he's been a, a massive, massive part of that Manly team for a number of years now. So really looking forward to that. For the Panthers, though, uh, I think James Fisher Harris coming back into that pack just adds another bit of bloody grunt for them to um, just roll on over the top of the Manly Seagulls. So, wow. Yeah. The Panthers have looked, you know, they lose someone like Cleary, um, who obviously uh, is barely a first grader, but they lose someone like him and um, they just continue on churning out wins. Is he injured or has he been dropped? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to know they just get winning without him so obviously not that important <laughs> um just going back to the warriors quickly someone might have to fact check me here but uh jack whiten has an incredible record of scoring tries against the warriors and he's got four in his last five or five in his last six against the warriors something like that in a green jersey i know but well the jersey's got green in it oh. <laughs> uh dolphins the Tigers, Dolphins, dollar fifty-eight, three and a half point favourites. Tigers are two dollars thirty. Surely they've only played once. Tigers got the dub last year. How do you see this one going? I see Tigers have lost nine of their last ten away games. Uh, Redcliffe, uh, or the Dolphins, sorry, are firing at the moment. So, yeah, I think without Lockie Galvin, and it's crazy to say that without an eighteen-year-old, that I don't think they'll be as strong. But I'll be backing the Dolphins at home. If this was in Sydney, then I wouldn't mind the Tigers just because, as we heard at Comeback the other day, the support they get is pretty crazy. But, yeah, I'll be backing the Dolphins to get the dub. Teddy, you got some stats for us? Yeah, well, first of all, the key stat is I'm not that fussed on on losing an 18-year-old Lachlan Galvin. I'm more prepared to be against the Tigers by the fact they've got to play Jaden Sullivan, maybe the player who tries the least in the NRL. So happy to be well against him. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely love the Dolphins in this one. They're like so I said, interstate teams, they are shocking on the road, the Tigers. Interstate teams are for winners well, covered just 37% in the opening out rounds. Dolphins, this is their best spot. They play their best football at night, covered nine of fifteen. Covered four of six as a favourite. Covered nine of fifteen off scoring twenty plus. I love everything about the Dolphin. I love the way they play. I think the fact that they're gonna be playing Sullivan staying makes them defensively a lot weaker. Uh, yeah, very keen Dolphins. You like your Dolphins? I certainly do. Yeah, big time. I think the 18-year-old, he's a big, big loss for the Tigers. Um, I'll be taking the same game multi uh, in this game because uh, I think there's going to be a few tries scored. So I'll have a few try scorers roaming around in my uh, same game multi, but I'll also have the Dolphins as well. I think they'll be just way too good for the Tigers who, um, look, they improved big, big time last week. Uh, against the Eels. That was a tough game for them. And that, as Teddy correctly noted, that goal line defence, um, or that red zone defence, even for uh, the greater part of that first half against the Eels, was superb. I don't, I, I can't see them doing that same thing again against this Dolphins team up there at Redcliffe. Cowboys, dollar fourteen. Gold Coast Titans, $5.40. Teddy, tell me why the plus 16.5 is a good bet. It's a shocking bet. I mean, man of the cut snakes have a plus 16 and a half. Uh, this is everything lines up for the minus. Uh, Sharp Hunt will be back in the 30, 31 plus here. We're looking for every big line you can get to get on the, the Cowboys. Cowboys play fast. They play direct. Exactly what the Titans don't need. Titans have got a gut full of injuries. But Cowboys have dominated the Titans, won 13 and 17, covered 12 of those games. But the real key here for me is the Cowboys 
They are at their best when they can put their foot their, their foot on the throat of a bad team. They've covered 29 of 42 when a double-digit favourite. So uh, Titans, they've covered just eight of their last 25 on the road. So, yeah, they're in a, they're in a lot of strife here. And if they're going to keep playing Tanner Boyd, well, then they deserve to keep getting beat. So uh, they are in for an absolute hiding this week, the Titans. This is the biggest line of the year and is, I think, you guys are at seven and a half now. I think it is going to be this. This will dump with a two in front of it. Wow, we need to redo our, uh, our letters very soon. I don't think so. Oh, I can. Uh, oh, we we had, we had Dolphins top eight, didn't we, Paul? I think we we're laughing. Yep, uh, I had Titans wooden spoon. I think I was the only one of the uh, group to have the Titans wooden spoon. Everyone wants to jump on it. They're now odds on to be wooden spoon. I might add, uh, if you ever look at the futures market. Nine dollars before the season started, so just throw that like out. Certain, seems like a certain finger you got up there, Carl. That's a little concerning for for young viewers of this one. Oh, <laughs> sorry, oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was my pen. <laughs> uh, Surly, you're you're on the Cowboys. Yeah, sorry, mate. Your Titans are in a world of trouble. I think it's going to be a pretty handy scoreline in favour of the Cows. Uh, they'll be fired up after letting themselves down last week. So yeah, I'm expecting a big bounce back. $5 for 61 plus points in the game, Teddy. You like that? Uh, yeah, I love the over in this one. Day game up in, uh, up in Townsville. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, there'll be plenty of points in this one. I'll yeah, be backing. I'll even have a little bit on the Cowboys to win 51 plus. So that's going to be the full there. Wow. Prayers for Titans fans. Last game. All, of... all, all, six, all six of them. <laughs> Devin. Uh, last game of the round Canberra Raiders, $1.78. Parramatta Eels, $2. The Raiders, one and a half point favourites at home. Tough one to pick, Teddy, or do the stats tell a different story? No, really different one to pick. I found this probably the hardest game of the week. Uh, Eels, no Moses, so you've got to kind of pull their rating back a couple of points here. Have won five of the last seven. Key hit for me is the Raiders at home and as a favourite. They've covered just 12 of 29 at home, 13 of 42 as a favourite. Can't make a huge case for for the Eels, but happy to be against the Raiders, and that's what's a small bit power, but, yeah, not, not, not a great game to get out on. You want to be ahead by this stage. Silly, what do you like? Yeah, yeah, this is a coin toss, isn't it? Um, it is a, a tough one to pick here, and probably the hardest game of the round, like Teddy said. Um, yeah, I'd go Canberra, but I'm not confident on it, so yeah, maybe that line in favor of the Eels is the way to go. Real fence set, yeah. Uh, I won't even sit on the fence. So. I'm happy to take the unders in this game, under 43 and a half. Um, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to see a better defensive performance from the Raiders this week at home. And I think it's always tough for teams to travel interstate um, after, after a bit of a, short, a shorter backup for, for the Eels because they played on Monday uh, this weekend just past. So, yeah, under 43 and a half for mine. All right. Be thing, Paul. How did we go last week? Oh, where's the sheep? Oh, that's spoiler the alert. One. Spoiler alert, not pretty. Uh, correct. Yeah. Very, very well, bad. I, I thought I did all right. Come. Yeah, well, you did, but the rest of us didn't. Okay, well, <laughs> start with good stuff. Teddy. That's about it. Uh, Teddy had three bets last week. His first was a multi roosters into the dolphins. Um, fell over at the first leg, unfortunately. Uh, then he had a couple of singles, Bulldogs plus six and a half, uh, 30 on there. And he also had uh, Dragons plus eight and a half, $40 on there. So he was up for the week and he is now uh, up forty nine ninety for the season. Um, so doing very nicely there, Teddy. In fact, I'm, like it, Paul. I, as I scroll across, you're the only one in the, the positive uh in terms that's, of returns. That's the last thing we need. Uh, Blake, he had bunnies, cowboys, sea eagles, waz. Um, no, no good there. Had 80 on that. And then he had Nanai, uh, anytime try scorer, Niso, anytime try scorer, Trebojevic, anytime try scorer, and Manly, 13 and over. So that did not win either. Surly 
had the Waz 13 and over, Dolphins minus two and a half, Cowboys minus two and a half, Roosters minus one and a half. <laughs> um, he's, he's really. <laughs> he's, you get any right there? He's uh, swinging. Three, I've got the Dolphins. That's it. <laughs> uh, and then he had uh, Cowboys, Waz minus six and a half, Tigers plus 12 and a half, and Raiders. Um, unfortunately, no good there either. Carl, three bets last week. Waz, Dolphins, Raiders, all head to head. Um, Raiders let you down. Thanks, Raiders. Yeah. Uh, and then you had over 61 and a half in the Waz Knights game. Um, didn't even get close, to be fair. Yeah. And then you had overs in the Roosters, Panthers, and overs in the Broncos, Cowboys. Um, I think you missed by half a point or a point there mm. in that Roosters, Panthers game. If the Cowboys could score some points, then we might have been all right there, too. Um, I've done Teddy, and then I was hopeless. Uh, Cowboys, Dolphins, no, and then Trebojevic and Hamiso to score a try, no. Move on. Really, really tough. Uh, we'll start at the top then, Teddy. What are you spending your hundred dollars on this week? Uh, we're gonna have a thirty dollar uh four leg multi, I think about four dollars and three. Uh, Melbourne Storm, Penrith Panthers. Dolphins, North Queensland. We are going to have uh, $70, I mean $70 on the Bulldogs plus 10 and a half. So no, lead, no lead there, just, just grit. Just, just try to build a bank. I like that. I like that. Um, I typically go a bit more leery. I've got uh, $80 on a multi. The Warriors are going to cover the line of one and a half. Souths haven't covered the line in each of their last 11 straight. So we're going to absolutely put them to the sword. Then we've got Storm and Roosters head to head and Cowboys 13 plus. So that four legger is paying $5.14. And then $20 always have to have a try scorer gone with the double barrel deluxe of Dallin Wateni Zalesniak, uh, the Hammer. And then Kai Pierce Paul, who was the only the third player I could find with a double barrel that I didn't mind to score. I was searching deep into the archives there. That's paying us seventeen dollars and nineteen cents. Get up, Kai. Come on, son. I think it was more impressive than your bets as your the names of your multi is very, very good. Yeah, well it's hard. You come up with the name first and then you find the players, and sometimes you're really battling by that third player. Paul? <laughs> yeah, where, uh, where do you go from there? <laughs> yeah, tough act. Sorry, Paulie. Uh, that's brilliant. If, yeah, if only Andrew Joey Johns was still playing as yeah, yeah. a double barrel. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go very, very. I'm playing with a straight bat this week. Uh, I'm going to try and just get some runs on the board. Uh, so I've taken a three league multi. Really, really simple. All head to head as well. Melbourne Storm. Penrith Panthers, Dolphins, it comes out to $3.61. Putting the whole hundy on. That's it. I'm done. Boom. Like you, straight bat from me. Three legs. Melbourne Storm, Dogs, plus 10.5. Dolphins, 100 on at 4.22. I'll let you guys in a little secret. A straight bat isn't three leg multi after three leg multi. <laughs> <laughs> and it's reverse sweep after reverse sweep. <laughs> That's, That's how we do it funny. over here. That's how we do it over here. If you're going to tell from my bets, we like rolling the dice. Did you not hear what Silly was? <laughs> I, I, I love the rolling the dice. It's the hiding the rolling the dice behind calling it a straight bat. Yeah, I love I love how you two got sprayed for for four league four dollar multis, and I got my uh, double barrel deluxe under through to the You were, you were calling it a straight bat, so You called yeah, it what true. it was a bit leery. <laughs> that's true. Oops. The old deluxe. I've got Blake's picks here as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, Blake went, uh, he's got a three leg multi, Waz minus one and a half, Storm to win, Roosters to win, $90 on that at 347 Straight bat, yep. Then he's going, uh, well, no, we can't call this a, uh, a straight bat. He's gone, Xavier Coates to score a try, Storm to win, into Nanai to score a try, Cowboys to win. Into turbo to score a try, manly to win ten dollars at twenty nine seventy. Um, so he's gone for a triple double there. Yes, triple dub. I like it. The Luca Doncic, get up. 
So, yeah, in terms of Blake versus us, we're definitely playing with a straight bat with our very simple <laughs> uh, three-leg multi. Absolutely. We didn't have the Eels top four either, Paul, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, punters, please do bit responsibly, especially if you follow us in. Uh, that'll do us for another week on the Advantage Line. Surly, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Likewise, uh, Teddy, thank you. Pleasure as always. Can't wait for next week. You win okay too, Paul. Thanks, thanks, Carl. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'll be back next week too. We'll just have to wait. <laughs> talk, we'll talk about that later yeah. offline. Whoosh. Uh, and thank you to the listeners once again. Uh, we'll be back next week to do it all again. Review round five, preview round six on the Advantage Line.